I'm a 30-year-old man, and my fiancé, who's 30 and from France, is the love of my life. Although we live in England, I'm English, and she's French. We've decided to tie the knot next year in her hometown in the south of France. The reason is simple, it's a beautiful place with amazing weather. Far better than what we get in the UK. Two years ago, we shared our wedding plans with everyone, giving them plenty of time to save up and make travel arrangements. We've rented a massive farmhouse with plenty of bedrooms and glamping tents, so all our loved ones can stay together in one place. Our wedding weekend will be a fun-filled affair, starting on Friday and ending on Monday, with the big day itself happening on Saturday. As we planned our special day, we decided that we'd prefer an adult-only celebration. With 18 months to go, we let everyone know about this decision. We personally spoke to our friends who have kids, explaining our choice. And they all understood and said it was no problem at all. We were relieved and grateful for their support. However, my sister didn't agree with our decision. She saw the wedding as a family reunion and insisted that her two kids, aged five and three at the time of the wedding, should be included. I explained to her that we had thoughtfully considered our choice for several reasons. Firstly, we don't have kids of our own and our dog will be present, which could be stressful since he doesn't get along with children. Additionally, the venue has an open pool and legally, we'd need to hire a lifeguard if anyone under six attends. Honestly, we just prefer the company of adults and we want our parents and family to relax and enjoy themselves without the responsibility of looking after kids. I know it might seem selfish, but we want this day to be about us and us alone. We want our loved ones to be fully present and focused on celebrating with us without any distractions. Especially my parents, I want them to be able to relax and enjoy every moment with me without the responsibility of looking after their grandkids. This is my special day, and I want them to be there for me, completely and utterly. I remember my cousin's recent wedding, and he confided in me that he felt sad because his dad spent the whole time looking after his own grandchild instead of spending time with him, the groom. He barely had a chance to talk to his own father on his special day. That resonated with me and I don't want the same thing to happen at my wedding. My sister is now saying she might not be able to attend the wedding because her husband, who initially didn't want to come anyway, won't be able to watch the kids. That's a whole different issue, and honestly, it's not my responsibility to solve. We gave her 18 months notice, which is plenty of time to figure out a solution, but we can't do it for her. My sister was really upset, so we tried to find a middle ground, we offered to have our official ceremony in England so she could attend with our niece and nephew and be part of our special day. Then, we'd have a separate celebration in France, which would be more of a party. We thought this was a great compromise, as she could still join us in France, relax, and have a good time, all on us. But now, she's saying that if her kids aren't invited to the France event too, she won't come to either one. It feels like she's reneging on our agreement. Our response was clear and reasonable. We told her that if she chooses not to attend either event, that's her decision, but she's still invited to both. We also reiterated that her children are welcome to attend the ceremony in the UK. But we won't be changing our minds about the France celebration, it's adults only. Am I wrong? But I want to clear something. Early on in our planning, we considered offering on-site daycare services so parents could drop off their kids and check in on them throughout the day. But my sister shut down that idea, saying she wouldn't use it and that her kids would be attending the wedding and spending time with family. After that, we decided it was simpler to just have an adult-only event rather than trying to accommodate kids. Our wedding celebration spans several days but the actual ceremony and main event are still only on one day Saturday. Some guests are planning to come just for that day, flying in Saturday morning and departing Sunday morning. This option could have made childcare easier for those who needed it. But we've already decided on an adult-only event. My sister would have had her own room in the farmhouse 
not a camping tent. Plus, the flights to get there are only about two hours long, so it's a quick and easy trip, not some grueling, thousand-mile journey. I mentioned earlier that our dog is reactive, but I didn't explain fully. He's actually great with teenagers and babies, but toddlers who are running around and screaming can scare him and trigger his herding instinct. As a herding breed, he has a strong urge to chase and gather them, which isn't ideal. We're working on helping him overcome his fears, but it's a challenge to change his herding behavior. To avoid any potential issues, it's best for us to keep him away from situations with multiple young children. I realize now that I misspoke when I said we don't like children. That wasn't accurate. We just don't have kids of our own yet, and we're not at that stage in our lives. We have plenty of nieces, nephews, and friends' kids who we love and spoil rotten. We just prefer to celebrate special occasions like our wedding with adults, that's all. I was thoughtless with my words and didn't mean to give the wrong impression. To top it all off, my sister just called me and tore into me over the phone, calling me selfish and horrible names. She's furious that we're not inviting her kids and threatened to never speak to me again if we don't change our minds. It's like she's completely disregarded the compromises we made to accommodate her. She's adamant that her kids should be at the wedding. And I'm the bad guy for setting boundaries. It's really hurtful and frustrating. Story 2 As I headed home from campus, a guy sat down next to me. I had my headphones on, listening to music, so I didn't pay attention to him at first. But then he waved to get my attention. I took off one headphone and he introduced himself. We shook hands and he asked me some basic questions. Then he asked if I had a girlfriend, and I told him no. I thought that would be the end of it, but no such luck. He then asked me if I wanted to be friends with benefits, which I also turned down. When the bus stopped, the guy sat down with another girl around my age who was sitting across from me. I put my headphones back on, but I could see his lips moving, so I knew he was talking to her. A few minutes later, he got up and left her looking really grossed out, like he had asked her something totally inappropriate. That's when I realized he was looking for someone to mess around with. He then moved to the back of the bus. I glanced back a few times and saw him sitting with different young women each time, likely trying his luck with them too. Right before I got off the bus, he was standing in front of me, eyeing another girl. What really caught my attention was that he was 20 years old, he had told me that earlier, and this girl looked like she was only 16 at most. He didn't say a word to her, just kept staring at her with a creepy smile on his face. That's when I got off the bus and he was still standing there, eyeing her like a predator. It was just so desperate and suspicious.